Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Puppy Pile by Thing12 Games. This is a two to six player game that takes roughly 20 to 25 minutes to play and is for ages six and up. And in the game Puppy Pile, you are attempting to make your hidden puppy the winner of the pile. You're trying to get your puppy all the way to the top of the pile and then be selected for a winner of the blue ribbon. If yours is selected, you win the game and it's over. However, if nobody's is selected, then then you're going to continue playing and remove that puppy, or if one of your opponents is collected, then of course they will win. At the beginning of the game, you're going to select one random puppy from the puppy deck. You're going to place the piles of puppies out, and of course you're going to shuffle and place an action deck out where you're going to be drawing a card and doing what it says on your turn. Uh, this is going to let you move puppies either forward or backwards or switch the way in which the order is created up until the card is drawn. When the card of the ribbon is drawn, the player, hopefully at the very end, who owns the puppy is going to be the winner of the game. Puppy Pile, yeah, it's a really quick, quick simple, like straightforward type family filler game. Let's talk about it. To set up the game Puppy Pile, the first thing you do is you place the bed on the far left hand side. Then you're going to shuffle the puppy tiles and distribute them one at a time in a row until all 12 puppies have been placed. Take the puppy deck and shuffle the cards. Deal out either one or two to each player depending on your game mode. In the advanced mode it's two and each player will select one. That is going to be your puppy that you're going to try to get to the top of the puppy pile. Discard all the rest of the puppy cards. You will not be using those except for the one that you are keeping. And of course, take the action deck and shuffle it and place it next to the game pile and you're ready to begin. This game is actually very simple as to how it's played. If for instance, I am the Dalmatian, I'm going to want to check and see where my Dalmatian is in the pile. The bed is at the very bottom. And of course, the area on the opposite end is the top of the pile. If my Dalmatian is somewhere in the middle, I want to make sure that my Dalmatian gets all the way to the top in order to hopefully win that blue ribbon. If my puppy is over here and that card is drawn, then I win. Each time you take a turn, you're just going to draw a card from the deck. You will read the card and do what it says. Now, in order to understand what the cards do, you have to understand what the puppy tiles are. They are going to say a name of a puppy and of course the art, and then there are three different categories of puppy. There's the size, there's the hair length, and there's the job of the puppy. There are also two unique puppies that change that a little bit. For instance, there is a mutt, and the mutt doesn't actually have hair length, but it has all three jobs, and there is a totally a dog, cat, that doesn't actually have any jobs because this specific type of dog doesn't like to do jobs and instead has both hair lengths. They basically play just like puppies, but they're a little different in how you move them. You'll read the card and it'll say something like, move a medium sized dog above any small or toy sized dog. And you'll check to see a medium sized dog. And then you'll go ahead and place that dog um, in a space that is going to be next to a medium or toy size dog. So you can actually move them and manipulate the dogs based on the card that you get. And then you'll pass your turn, and that's the next player's turn. And they will draw a card from the deck. Move one dog down two spaces, and you can select any dog that you'd like. Uh, then the next player will go and draw a card and move a dog up one space. And that's just how it's going to go. There are a ton of different cards that involve moving the different types of dogs or any type of dog or switching up which side the bed is going to be on, maybe changing the order of play up until you get one fancy card. That card is called pick a winner. It will let you remove the top dog from the stack. Uh, if anyone's dog is that dog, then they win. Otherwise, you'll draw again and continue playing the game. Whenever it says to draw again, your turn is not over. You'll actually just draw another card and do whatever that card says. If a dog is nobody's dog, it gets removed from the game and you'll keep playing. Additionally, if it's, it happens twice in a row where you get a, a pick a winner and then another pick a winner pops out before the deck is emptied, you're going to reshuffle the deck if no one has won the game. Up until somebody's dog does win the game and is at the end of the pile and gets that blue ribbon. Once that happens, the game is over and the player whose dog was picked wins Puppy Pile. So Puppy Pile is a light, family-friendly dog game. This is the first tiny dog game I've seen, at least to my knowledge, um, that isn't a big Euro game, like A Dog's Life or Dogs, the European reprint. Uh, this game is very straightforward, being able to select a dog, or in my favorite case, the two different dogs, and picking one of them. And then your objective is to try 
and manipulate the board so that your dog gets to the front. Now the cards are random. You never know what you're going to get. So in order to try and kind of like evaluate the percentage of getting your dog up there and then having the card get drawn that is the winner is all like that's what this whole strategy of the game is about. Utilizing the cards to manipulate other dogs so that your opponents don't know which dog is yours while slowly and secretively getting your dog to the top of the pile. When the card is drawn and the winner has been selected, that dog needs to be your dog. But you also have to make sure that people don't know what your dog is because otherwise they're going to send that dog as far back as humanly possible on the stack here. Uh, another thing to note too is there are two different ways you can play the game. You can have these guys all standing up, which I put them up as you can see better for the video. But when playing, you can either have them face down. It's really just up to you. Um, and there's a variety of different types of ways to move the dogs. I love the fact that you can actually rotate the bed and change the order of the pile. You can actually eventually even swap two different dogs uh, from anywhere on the game board. You'll be moving different types of dogs of different types of like a uh, variety of hairstyle or like jobs or like the size of the dogs and just secretly moving your specific dog in any way possible. You can try the aggressive strategy or the secret one. So for instance, if I have the bulldog and my bulldog is in the middle here, I'm drawing cards from the deck, right? I'll draw my card first. It says I can move any dog to the top of the stack. Well, I could move my bulldog to the top of the stack, right? Which, you know, might pay off for me if somebody draws the winner card on the next turn. But the problem is if they don't, and there's only two in this whole deck, what's gonna happen is everyone's gonna know what my dog is. And my dog is never gonna see the top of the deck, uh, the top of the pile, as long as they possibly can make sure that that is a you know, reasonable possibility. So you have to kind of decide, maybe instead of actually moving my bulldog to the front, um, maybe I'll move something like, oh, I don't know, the mutt to the front. That, that way it doesn't actually make me lose any positioning on my dog. Um, but it also puts a target on the mutt, making people think that that might actually be my dog. And thusly, they'll waste actions moving this character as opposed to mine. And you can also utilize unique little, little tricks and turns. There are certain cards that will say you can uh, move two dogs up to three spaces. Maybe I'll, I'll continue to like move other dogs that are not mine. And then maybe I'll move something like the Bulldog, but only move him one space so that people don't think he's a high priority. Um, you can also, of course, like I said, just go for the, the go for the broke, try and push your dog all the way to the front, which is a, a legitimate strategy and probably can work on the occasion, just depending on how deep the deck is and what are the odds of you actually getting that winner card. Okay, that being said, this is a light game. This is a family-friendly dog game that works really well if you have people who enjoy dogs, want something as a filler in between certain games. Um, even still, we played a live stream of the game um, yesterday, actually, and the game we played multiple times. I actually wanted to play again. Usually I play one game on the stream and I'm done. This one here, I had so much fun, especially because I lost too, so I had to win, <laughs> try and win even though I lost again. Uh, I wanted to play again, and it has that fun feeling. I, I, I could see people enjoying watching me play just as much as I was enjoying playing. So it's got actually some cool table presence. The art is beautiful, the cards work. Everything about this game is great as long as you don't mind a small little game. Don't expect something insane or crazy. This is kind of like that exploding kittens type of level of complexity, but it has a range of like enjoyment from like the younger, younger kids, younger teens, to family, to even the most versatile gamer is going to enjoy Puppy Pile. Thing 12 Games did a solid job of this one here. Uh, this is a game I keep in my collection for sure. And if you're a dog lover, I strongly recommend you pick up the game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Puppy Pile by Thing 12 Games. If you're interested in picking this game up, there will be a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. We can go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you think we've earned it. And of course, if you'd like, you can go ahead and hit that notification button too. <laughs> you can also check out our live streams every Thursday, Wednesday on 6.30 p.m. PST and Sunday as well, <laughs> uh, where we do games just like this one. All right, guys, <laughs> these guys are getting nuts, but these are my animals, and I love animals, so I figured I'd bring them on for the puppy pile, and maybe a chicken, too. Huh. All right, guys, thank you so much, and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Jump. <laughs> <laughs>